Welcome everyone. This video is going to be a little different than the ones in the past. This is going to be probably my first vlog and I just feel like, you know, I've got to be able to do videos. I have to be able to do content that's not just that's not requiring a huge amount of production, a huge amount of editing. I want to be able to just share my thoughts and just honestly just speak my mind every now and then this won't be a regular thing but every now and then i need to be able to just vent everything that i have with him let's just go ahead and talk about a few things and these are honestly not like some you know massively important life-shattering thing that you've never heard before I want to talk about, first of all, why is my channel, or I guess we would say, let's let's rephrase it. What's the purpose of my channel? Like, why are you doing this? I'm doing this because I have a wide range of interests, first of all. And secondly, I have a desire to share my thoughts about things. And thirdly... When I go on YouTube and I'm looking up things on, for example, active imagination, and I've shared this example before, you you hardly find anything. You you find basically like somebody read a medium.com article, somebody read a Wikipedia synopsis paragraph, or whatever, and they're basically regurgitating it to you, you know, with a nice fancy set. And, you know, it's also cute and they've got the little techno music in the background, you know. Okay, that's great. You know, if, if you like vanilla ice cream in a really fancy bowl, then that kind of thing, I guess, will be satisfying to you. And honestly, I feel like, you know, I'm not gifted in, in making things look fancy and elaborate and alluring, and, and I'm not really good at marketing. And, you know, I don't apologize for that, and honestly, I don't. Well, I, I do view it as a weakness in some regards. In other regards, I don't view it as a weakness. I view it as a good thing to some extent because just by nature, I, I'm just a sincere person. You know, I don't like playing games. I don't like faking. I don't, you know, to me, it's just cheap. And I've never seen anything built upon the foundation of shallowness and fakeness, I guess. <laughs> Or artificiality. I've never seen it last. I've never seen it really impact people. The people who have impacted me mostly in the realm of, okay, let's go through the realms. In the realm of, like, you know, Christianity would be James White and John MacArthur. In the realm of psychology, Carl Jung and Jordan Peterson. In the realm of gaming, well, I don't really have anybody who I, you know, follow regularly. But especially, I guess, when I was a kid, you know, I was heavily influenced by my dad just watching him game. Even my grandfather would love to play Diablo 2, believe it or not. You know, some baby boomer. I guess he was he was before baby boomers, I guess. But, you know, somebody of that age playing Diablo 2, and I'd just love to just sit there watching him, you know. <laughs> the point I'm making is that all of these people, all of these examples of mine role models, examples, whatever. They're all genuine. They're all sincere. They're not cheap. They're not fake. They're not vain. And that's really something that's formed me as I've seek, or rather as I've sought, and I guess as I continue to seek to, you know, be an individual, to individuate, to be differentiated, to be who I am, you know, whatever that is. That's certainly something that I've adopted. That's that's a quality I've I've taken into my own life, and I think to some extent I've, I've it's come from within spontaneously of its own accord, as much as it's been absorbed from those models and examples that I admire. So, what I'm trying to do with YouTube, what I'm hoping to benefit you is I'm hoping that it benefits you to see content that is not merely, oh, you know, this is trending, let's make a video as fast as we can about this. 
oh, I bet it would be popular to do this or that. Okay, whatever, you know. Not everything is popular. And what I'm hoping to do for you is to offer you content that is to be entirely sincere with you, coming from my heart. That's not just being conjured up for the sake of views or, you know, to try to fit in with a group or whatever. You know, I couldn't care less about any of this. And I'm going to, we're going to get into why that is, or at least me thinking about why, why am I like that? But I've always been a thoughtful person. I've always been somebody who, when I think about something, it's almost like an obsession. You know, I, I really go full speed ahead when I think about something. And, you know, when something catches my interest, like, for example, active imagination, it's a relatively recent interest of mine. When it captures my interest, I read, and I read everything I can find about it. I look, I'm capable of analyzing what I read. You know, a lot of people just, you know, they have no ability to filter out, no ability to, you know, form a cohesive system from all the different authors and the different writings that you find on a subject and, and mold it together and form it together into something that's unified and yet distinct. It's, it's, it's more than just a regurgitation of young. You know, my view of active imagination is something that has stemmed from my own experience, my own practice in doing it. So what I'm telling you is more than just, hey, I researched a little bit about young, and here's what he said. While that is true, you know, and a lot of the content on YouTube about active imagination hasn't even gone that far. And, but while that's true about what I've done, I've also thought about it and I've tried to, you know, especially with like the technique video, I've tried to reform it, re-communicate it in a way that's it boils down the disparate and various aspects and angles, you know, into one unified idea. That's kind of my, my technique video. And this is what I strive to do in general. When I'm gaming, you know, that is more for entertainment. The reason I do gaming videos is because I'm a, I'm a gamer, you know. That's just who I am. And I have fun, you know, especially with the granny stuff. I have a lot of fun. And it's just kind of just spontaneously you want to express it. It's like an art form, you know. It's like you're doing this and it's it's a creative outlet. And you just can't help but you want to make something, a video, or, you know, in this case, or, you know, more artsy people would want to paint something or write a song or whatever. And making videos is basically just a different form of that same line of artistic expression. So, previously, I've told you this before, in one of my just chatting videos before. YouTube, I did it politically, you know, like, surprise, I have my own political views, you know, no surprise there. Everybody does, pretty much. And to be perfectly honest, you know, that was not sincere. That was done for views. That was done for just saying how popular a video could be, you know, and I've, you know, something has changed in me since that time. Even then, I wouldn't fully affirm doing that. I wouldn't be, you know, proud of doing that or anything. But that's changed, you know. Some of them are funny, you know. I'll let you be the judge of which ones I'm talking about. Some of them are rather hilarious. And others are just kind of, well, okay, you know, informative or whatever. But in the past year... What has changed? Why am I on YouTube again? Why am I doing this? So sometimes you go through things that make you ask, you know, questions of your life. Like, I mean more than just, well, I mean, what is the meaning of your life? But also, like, what is the value of insincerity? You know, if you're healthy and you're, 
you know, making a lot of money just being a fake shill for somebody, then, you know, you might just go through life and, and you might ask yourself once or twice, you know, is it worth doing it? Is this okay? You know, can we handle this? If, on the other hand, you know, you've... You have seen it damaged lives. You know, you've you've seen the impact of fakery, I guess, you know, charlatanry, whatever you want to call it, you know, whatever synonym you'd like to use for that. And when you have, you know, personally been put through the ringer and, and yourself been tested, you know, can you do this? Can you make a living with fakery? Can you, you know, imbibe that as part of your identity being inauthentic and just being a living persona, you know, a walking mask, a puppet, you know, you belong to somebody else and you represent somebody else and it's not who you are. Well, can you do that? Well, I've personally been tested this year in addition to just the umpteen other terrible things that have happened this year in all seriousness. And when your health, you know, is also added into the list of the horrible things that have happened, then you just start taking inventory of life. You know, it's a natural thing. And for a lot of people, they don't face loss and they don't face personal, tangible loss, you know, of their own health or of their own, you know, close-knit circle. That typically waits till later on in life. And so... It's not surprising that for most people, you have a midlife crisis, you know. Eventually, you have to answer all the questions you've been ignoring, you've been sweeping under the rug, you've been putting off, you've been, you know, suppressing, you've been belittling even the need to answer such a question. Well, eventually, they, they do come out, and eventually, you have to answer them. Eventually, you have to take stock of your life and look back and say, what have I done? What of value have I done? What of value have I left behind? What is valuable, you know? Is what I do valuable only if it's popular, only if it makes me money, you know? Is that the measure of your value? Because for a lot of people, that's what it is. You know, I mean, that also raises a question. Well, if if your life is only meaningful, if you become some great wealthy, popular, you know, somebody who's, who's arrived and attained. And you ask yourself, okay, what about some missionary who has literally spent their lives with a small group of people in a third world country, and nobody knows them, and they've done this on their own dime. You know, they haven't gone through a missionary board or a humanitarian humanitarian organization and they've funded all this, and they've literally become living sacrifices for the people to whom they live, or with whom they live. And it's done nothing but cost them money. And it has been such that it has kept them from pursuing another career in which they may have succeeded, and they may have, you know, oh, what have they... what? What may have they have invented or achieved or, you know, what may have, what book may they have written if they hadn't spent their life doing this? You know, for the people they've spent with their life with, for the people whom they have given their life, that's valuable. Even though it has no monetary benefit, even though it has no productive benefit, even if it's not monetary, you know. Well, you have to ask yourself these questions. You know, a lot of people go through their life just assuming that, okay, you know, my life will be successful in the end if I end up, you know, wealthy. If I end up, you know, with a nice big family, if we end up with a nice house and blah, 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 blah. The things that everybody, like, by default seems to think for whatever reason. I have my own ideas about why. The tyranny of the ego deals with that. You know, where does this come from? Why does this, why is it that, you know, everything has to be boiled down into numbers and money and self over others? I've gone through a lot this year. I'm not even sure I'm ready to 
you know, fully talk about it, especially not on YouTube. I'm barely ready to talk through it with, you know, family members who aren't going through it as well. But I will tell you this, that when I, when I tell you on every video, when I say, I truly hope this benefits you in some way, I hope that this helps you, enriches you, entertains you, informs you something. I sincerely mean it from my heart. That, you know, that aspect has, I've always, you know, been somebody who tends to be more empathetic and conscientious, especially if we're talking like in terms of the big five personality traits. But that, that has been heightened, that has grown in the last year as you look back over your life. You know, I left my job, I think it's now almost two months ago to the day, at least when I was recording this. And that job, you know, if I had stuck with it for 20 years, the chances are I would be making seven figures a year. You know, statistically, I could expect that. By, you know, I started in March. By this time, if I were still there, I could be expecting to be making six figures. And I swear, I, I do not say any of this to brag, you know, because I didn't get this job because I'm like some special person. They accept just about everybody. But it, imagine, imagine the reflection and imagine the like self-examination and, and consideration of what is worth what is your worth in life? Where does it come from? Okay, and moving past yourself, what is just in general worthwhile in life? What is valuable? You know, I left this job for my health reasons, primarily, and there were other reasons, but those are the primary reasons. So, in many ways, you you feel like this has been taken from you. You know, like, imagine how my kids would be blessed if I were making six or seven figures. Like, imagine the education I could get for them. Imagine, you know, they wouldn't have to grow up, you know, in some ways like I did, where you don't have everything all the time, you know? And imagine that this person who's providing them all these things has himself been on the side of, of having nothing, of having very little What a story that would be, you know? And it feels like, you know, this story that we've all hoped on, we've all been praying about, which itself seemed to be, you know, the answer that we were looking for, it's like it's been taken from us. You know, that tests you, especially when you're living it and you're experiencing it. More than you would think that tests you, that challenges you, that forces you whether you like it or not, to take inventory of your life. What are you doing for other people? What really, truly matters in the end? You know, if you were gone from this earth tomorrow and you leave behind whatever it is you leave behind, would there be worth? Would there be lasting value for somebody other than you with what you've left behind? Well, those are the questions I've been asking of myself. And I'm convinced that the answer is, you know, monetary value is irrelevant. Fame and popularity concerning whatever it is you do is irrelevant. I'm convinced in my own mind. <clears throat> you know, if you go through life and you're like some uh, car salesman mogul, you know, and you leave behind four used car dealerships, You, would, you could say to yourself, at the end of the day, you, you could say to yourself, think of all the people who are able to have used cars thanks to me. Okay, you know, that's true. They could always have gone somewhere else, you know, and if you're treating them like crap, to be honest, maybe it would be better that you didn't create this little empire of yours selling used cars, you know. Monetary value and... and like the extent of popularity, growth, scale, degree, scope, 
of whatever enterprise or structure that you've built in this world, I'm convinced is irrelevant. You know, there's, like I said just a moment ago, there are some things that are big, lucrative, and this world would have been better off if they had never come into existence. <clears throat> You also ask yourself really big questions that really are relevant to you individually. For example, you ask yourself things like, where does worth come from? I mean, I guess that's somewhat tied to you. What is the value of a corporation? And by value, I don't, obviously, I don't mean financially. And I obviously mean something far beyond how many jobs are they making? You know, I've worked some jobs and it's kind of like, you know what? It's almost like these people would be better off doing anything but this. And they just do this because it's the only thing they have, you know. Well, do you pat yourself on the back for making a miserable, soul-sucking, crappy job? Where people just exist and they've sold themselves to your company, you know? They're basically a robot made of flesh and bones instead of metal. Do you pat yourself on the back and say, thank God we made all these jobs, you know, thankfully, at least these people wouldn't be doing something else or, you know, as if you would know, you know, maybe they would have found something else or who knows what, have ha what would have happened. Is that the, is that the measure of worth? Is that value? Is that, does that count for something? You've made a job, you know. You're generating X dollars a year from this, and they're getting, you know, X percent of whatever you're making from their labors. Okay, you know, I mean, the mere existence of that doesn't benefit people, does it? If everybody in this planet is just existing, and oh, at least they're producing, at least they're existing, what is the value of just existing? What is the value of merely, you know, doing the same thing every day? And that doing that precludes you from learning about yourself or pursuing anything creative, anything that would enrich you personally. You're just literally, you've sold your hands and your feet to a company, and you just have to do what they say with every waking hour. You know, I mean, is that valuable? Does that really benefit everything? And that leads into questions like modernity and technology to an extent, although I'm not as concerned about technology in and of itself. But modernity, these huge systems that have grown up, and to me it's like it literally devours the souls of people. That sort of feels like to me. That's what I personally felt like it did to me. And during my time in those places. And you just have to, you, you know, a lot of people don't do this, but you've got to just stop and just ask yourself, okay, you know, let's stop and let's take a look around. What has the world become in the last hundred, in the last two, in the last 300 years? Is this progress? Has it been worth it? You know, yes, oh, thank goodness we have all this technology and blah, blah, blah. Okay. At what price? You know, what does it take to sustain this? Has it been worth it? And it's especially easy if you are a nice, comfortable, middle or upper class person in this nice, comfortable country of ours, you know, and you don't understand the, all the products you rely on for your comfort and the, the supply chain and the hundreds and thousands of people, you know, that would have to be that all go to work every day and have their soul basically starve to death and then they have, never have time or any ability or opportunity to develop themselves as a person, you know, as a family member, artistically, creatively. They literally just work, you know, in some lithium mine or in you know, a glass manufacturer, a metalworking plant, a oil distillery in some foreign country. They work to make, you know, little plastic pellets that they mold into all the little trinkets that we use every day. 
blah, blah, blah. And, you know, your comfortable lifestyle has thousands of people who get up every day and do these kinds of jobs to sustain it. And I just ask myself, is it worth it? You know, is modernity worth it? Now, I'm not, I don't take the position, okay, well, what we need to do is we just need to depopulate the planet, you know, and let's spread, you know, the culture of death. <laughs> and let's just depopulate everything because the problem is there's too many people. And you know what? The problem is not that there are too many people. The problem is that there are people. And nobody, me included, can get around the fact that you could have two people on this planet and still there would be conflict and problems and selfishness and, you know, inequality, injustice. There would be those things if there was five people. There would be those things if there's 50,000 people. If there's five billion people, you're going to find it on this planet. To some extent, you'll never... You will never overcome that. You will never change that. That's unless you can change the human heart. And you know, who what human being on their own has been able to change the human heart? Nobody. Nobody can change their inclinations. Nobody can change their instinctive reactions to things. The you know, greed and envy come so quickly so naturally and where do they come from you know it's not just you you know weighing things in a balance and like oh i think i'll be a little bit on the greedy side today no they they come without your conscious consideration without your decision they just come to each and every one of us me included i have not arrived you know When I do this, these active imaginations, and the reason I'm bringing those up is because they're related to this, you know, this realm of our minds that produces these things, you know, the human heart, who can understand it, it produces all kinds of deceptions. That's, that's what attracts me to active imagination. I, what I was saying is that I have not arrived, you know. I am simply somebody who has been through situations in life that have made me ask questions of myself, of the world, of the way it is, of the way it's structured. That's all, you know. I'm just somebody who asks the questions and who is trying to put my money where my mouth is. You know, when I say, I think humanity, you know, has this corrupted twisted part i say that having looked in myself and seen it there in myself i want to end this video by going back to the idea of sincerity that's the one thing the one i think the one quality virtue the one aspect of human behavior i think that's never let me down Oh, sure, you know, it's let me down, and I'm too sincere to, to uh, sell mortgages to people who don't need them, you know, and do so for a major corporation. Yeah, it's cost me a lot of money in terms of the income I could have had. When I say it hasn't let me down, I mean that I can live with myself, and I can know that uh, when I'm sincere to people, I'm helping them far more than I would be able to help them if I were constantly trying to manipulate and twist how they perceive me and how I'm perceived. That's why I do psychology stuff, because I, I want to know where does it come from? Why do we do these things? The mechanism by which we do certain things. So this has been kind of rambling, but it's also contained a lot of my heart. A lot of my heart. And I just hope that this is you know, helped you understand where I'm coming from and where you can expect this channel to go. So I hope that this has clarified, you know, why am I like this? You know, why am I doing gaming and devotions and psychology, you know, and and various and sundry other little things like this video, which is I've never done before, and like music reaction stuff. Well, I'm doing it because... 
you know, you might think it's trivial, a music reaction video, but there have been, you know, there have been videos that have exposed me to music I've never heard, you know, and that's enriched me. Gaming videos. There are some, there are some gamers, uh, Quill18, I've followed for a while, I've subscribed to for a while. You know, his personalities, I find enriching, you know, with gaming. And of course, obviously, you know, it's, it's pretty clear how active imagination, psychology, and devotions would benefit people. But I'm just trying to do something with my life, you know, and it's it's the road less traveled. It really is. You know, the reason a lot of people don't do YouTube is because they don't, they can't sustain fakery for the length of time needed to, you know, get subscribers and get views and get monetized. Or they just get so discouraged by that you want to do X, but X is not popular. What future is there? What What is the reward? What is the benefit of making a very, you know, well done, well edited, well planned, well executed video? Well, you know, if something is not popular, then you're going to have a hard time sustaining yourself and bringing yourself to, you know, long term develop content regarding whatever that is that's not popular, but that you nonetheless find valuable and beneficial. So this is the road less traveled. And I recognize that I'm under no delusions. You know, when you see it, me put out a devotion, you know, and that's just my own convictions. I understand that a lot of people who subscribe to me don't share my convictions and that's perfectly fine. I don't demand that everyone look like me and agree with me <laughs> and think like me or whatever. I'm not like that. I'm not a fundamentalist in that way. But when I put out, like, for example, a devotion and it gets five views, you ask, well, why are you even doing that? You know, why do you even bother? It's because I feel like it has value whether or not you know, a million people see it and hey, you know, if a million people see it and are benefited, that's great. Or if five people see it and are benefited, that's great. I do it because it comes, it's like an overflow of my heart. It comes from my heart. It proceeds naturally from my heart and, and you know, five, five million, whatever. In any case, it's, it's benefiting somebody and I can look back on it. You know, at the end of my life, I could look back on all these videos for example, using the devotion topic and just say, you know what? Didn't get many views, but at least it was honest. And at least it benefits those who want to watch it. At least it's helpful. You know, screw whether or not it's profitable. Screw whether or not it's beneficial, you know, in some aspect regarding popularity, money, whatever. I couldn't care less about any of that. I honestly couldn't care less about any of that. I do it because it interests me and I honestly believe it's beneficial and it's wholesome and it's useful to others. And that's all I'm trying to do, you know, in this difficult, confusing life. <laughs> I mean, if only you knew, you know, like my mood and my thoughts today. <laughs> You know, this video would be more impactful because you just see me and you like, oh, you know, you're just doing another video. Well, you know, you don't know how rough the day was for me. You don't know what I thought about today, you know, that I wouldn't be comfortable sharing. And that's to say that somebody who endures this kind of thing every single day naturally is going to, you know, prune away the, the useless, the vain, the self-centered. It's like all of those things just naturally just fall away when you've been living like this and when your life has taken the turn it's taken for the last year. All of that naturally falls away. And you're, I mean, I, I guess for some people it doesn't, but... Speaking for my for myself, that's what's happened to me. And I'm just trying to leave behind wholesomeness and 
and um, I guess goodness, usefulness. You know, and I find that with sincerity. I find that in, in sticking with what I know. You know, I don't... I don't know a lot about, you know, like... I don't know a whole lot about music theory, you know? I don't know if I've ever told anyone this on YouTube, but I played banjo for... Let me think. It was five years. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was five years. You know, and I I did some performing. My my banjo teacher was, you know, he has records published. And then I left, you know, I stopped basically over a disagreement with him, you know, because he wanted me to perform, 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 you know, like sell your soul to this, perform. And I'm like, no, you know, I don't enjoy performing. I do this because I like the music. I enjoy the creative outlet. I don't do this because I want to perform and, you know, become like you. He's trying to make me into a junior version of himself. I had no interest in that. And I, not just like, oh, I don't like that, but like, no, I'm not a performing type. You know, I can't go on stage and perform. I would, it would kill me to, to spend my life having to do that every, you know, whatever week or month or whatever. But, I played banjo, and, you know, a lot of the music theory that I've learned, you know, when you talk about, like, a like a D7 chord, okay, I know how to make it, you know, I know what it sounds like, but I don't care about the notes, you know, oh, yes, it's D, A, blah, you know, I don't care about all that. <laughs> Nobody thinks about that, at least in the bluegrass music world. Well, if some people do, I don't think about it. I've never liked it, and I've always hated it, to be honest. It's always annoyed me how everyone's, like, sitting there, you know, mathematically analyzing a chord. To me, it's like, the chord is how it sounds. Like, when I hear that, I, I automatically know, you know, this is its name. It's a, you know, D7 chord, or whatever it is. It's like, when you hear your dog bark, it's like, oh, yeah, that's, you know, that's my dog, Elmer, because, you know, that's how he barks, you know? You hear the bark, you know the name, you know? And that's kind of how it is for me. I don't have to sit there and describe he has his, his legs are, you know, eight inches long. His uh, paws are three inches long. He has one black nail and two white. You don't have to analyze it like that for music, you know? Going back to what I was saying, I easily kind of follow little trails that branch from the main trail in my thought. I don't know music theory well enough to give a well, you know, researched, peer-reviewed lecture on why this song, you know, has a certain sound. I can tell you the chords. I can tell you things, you know, basic things about the nature of it musically. But I'm focused on, like, the je ne sais quoi. I'm focused on, like, yes, you know, you can analyze chords, chord progression, Okay, but there's still like a magic. There's still an element that's missing and ungraspable. And that's what I'm focused on. That's what I'm trying to do. With that, with, with the song reaction videos. It's hard to know when to stop talking. You know, there's so many things that I want to say. This video will probably get less than five views. <laughs> Which is fine. You know, it's fine. <laughs> My wife's channel gets, you know, tens of thousands of views a day, so it's not like, you know, like there's nothing at the end of the day. But it raises the question, you know, you, you do think, you know, if a, if a tree falls in the forest and no one's there to hear it, does it matter? Well, I've heard people say, you know, Small Twitter accounts on Twitter. I've heard, like, you know, people I agree with will say that and basically say, oh, you don't matter unless you have followers. Well, you want to know something? There's a lot of people who have lots and lots of followers who say absolutely nothing of importance, nothing of value. If they never tweeted again, the world would not be worse. And I know that sounds harsh and blunt, but I, I seriously mean that after reflecting on everything that I've seen, you know, since I started following them, you just have to conclude, you know, there's nothing of value on this. Oh, sure, you know, maybe they're promoting something, and financially they can say, oh, you know, look at how much money we made from this tweet or whatever. That's not value. That's not deep, meaningful, lasting value. 
So, yeah, I might be a tree falling in the forest with nobody around to hear, but everyone has to form an answer. Does that mean you just shut up and stop doing what you're doing? I think that's kind of ridiculous, you know. Everybody's got to start somewhere, you know, and it might take me 10 years to grow this channel to any kind of, you know, modestly respectable size. You know, with your goodwill as my subscriber and listener, of course. But it may not, you know. That's up to the Lord above, in, in all seriousness. So, I think that we're going to cut the link sausage off at this point. I appreciate you listening. If you've even made it this far, then God bless you for even listening to the whole video. But I just wanted to just truly bear my heart and just show you, you know, what motivates me. What, why do I do this? Why do I do what exactly, you know, specifically I do with like psychology stuff and, and all the blend of things that I do. Appreciate you listening. And I just hope that, I really do hope that I can be of some benefit to you in the future. You know, if you have any questions about anything, if there's a video that you want me to make, you know, unless this channel is just like, you know, people are asking me this every single day, the 9 out of 10, there's a 9 out of 10 chance that I'll actually make the video. You know, I'm serious. You want a video about what did Young have to say on blah, blah, blah? What does Jordan Peterson say about blah, blah, blah? How do you do blah, blah, blah on active imagination? How do you do this and, you know, this game, you know, any of the Diablo series, Planet's I 2, Crusader Kings, you know, pretty much any strategy game? Well, I'll find out for you and I'll probably make the video for you, you know, because I honestly want to be of use and benefit to you. And I just appreciate your time. And if you haven't subscribed, but any of this rings true to you, then I just encourage you to subscribe because... But for the foreseeable future, I plan to be this active every week, you know, about four long videos a week, two short videos, and taking a day off for my own, you know, personal well-being. And God bless you, and I, I really appreciate your time.